There we go. We are recording. I was going to say one thing that Toby brought up. Uh, it's a good idea. Everyone put the new members, put your LinkedIn profile in the chat. Toby brought up a good point. So everyone can be connected. Fantastic. Okay. So um, let, let's uh, hand over to our MC, um, Matt Small. Sure. Thank, thanks, Risa. Thanks, Afshin. Uh, appreciate the welcome. Uh, any uh, updates that you'd like to share from uh, from last week? Uh, anything regarding uh, College of the Canyons or any? Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, Ruth and I went to go and visit with the College of the Canyons to see if they will host our in-person summit on October 14 here in uh, the Santa Clarita Valley. So this is the north part of LA County. It's about 25 minutes from Burbank Airport if you want to fly in. Um, there's very good chance they will say yes. They they seem to give us a verbal yes. They just need to get it approved by their um, their committee. They're going to let us know today. Um, and look, I think what we should do is plan for the summit anyway. Um, we should build that agenda. Um, it's probably going to be a six-hour agenda. I think two hours are going to be private working group meetings of the advisory board and, and maybe uh, other folks. But then we'll have uh, four hours of public meetings in their lecture theatres. So this will be at the College of the Canyons in the university building. So they, they've, um, they, they, they've allocated for us sufficient space for us to have um, uh, a, a fairly sizable meeting. I don't anticipate, you know, more than 60 people showing up. I think that, that would be a good number if we if we got that. Um, and then, you know, there's all the logistics we need to sort out, apart from getting the agenda and uh, who's going to be talking and, and what we're going to be talking on. Um, that That is, that's regular stuff. There's people who need to book flights, need to book, you know, hotel rooms and so on. And uh, we need to get this out. So this weekend, Matt, I wonder if you have time. Uh, um, I'd like to work with you on on, on just getting the, the meat into that. Uh, look, we've got Slack for um, suggestions on what that should be. Let's get a Google Doc going of what, what that agenda is going to look like. Um, it's going to be a lovely day where we get to meet face to face. I think this is, this is also important. I think when Kai and I met face to face and we spent substantial time together, it it helped us bond and 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 synchronize our thinking a lot. Um, this is going to be a great opportunity. Right. I anticipate quarterly in person summits, and we'll pick a different um, uh, institution to host us. Um, but this first one. Uh, will be hosted by the College of the Canyons. So I'm hoping to get the um, the green light today, and then we can we can kick off um, that so October 14. Super exciting! I'm I'm really thrilled about it. Um, back to you, Matt. Awesome, and I think there were some questions as well on the sale RFP and uh, the mission statement. You know, thoughts yeah. and, and next steps there. Uh, Afshin, I saw that you were in there this week. Uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Sorry, to the chat. Um, uh, well, I don't know if someone else wants to go first, but I can. I don't know, your thoughts or not. Or um, so. I've I've not I've not made any progress on it, and so bad on me. But I, I've been. Most of us have been slammed this week. I know um, uh, um, Mike Rubin, who uh, said he would do that. I know he's slammed. He's traveling in Europe. And um, Matthew McMullen is also traveling. So we're going to ask for forgiveness. And the, 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 the call for papers is not due till November, but um, I, I would like to get something in early um, so that Jordan can shepherd it through the scale organization. Um, so again, anybody who's got ideas for um, submissions or talks or presentations, the scale call for papers is the one that I think is going to be big for us. It's going to be March of next year in Pasadena, and it's the big Linux developer conference. And uh, there's an opportunity for Kwai to have a track um uh or or some sort of um 
very significant participation there. Um, on the other housekeeping matters, um, on the yeah, Jeff, is there for one of the and, and I'm not to that. put the scale uh, abstract in yeah. the chat, someone just so people can remind them. I think that'd be a good idea too. To right. uh, for people who were here last week, because we talked about last week. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, and, and and Matt, I think the link is in in Slack, uh, but but um, uh, putting it in chat would be great as well. Um, so other housekeeping matters. Um, look, there's 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 a lot of sausage making that's going to have to go on in the background, and I I would appreciate more help um, from the advisory board members. Um, we're all busy, we are all super busy. But there's the membership agreement needs reviewing, um, the uh, NDA, um, all of the stuff as as we we're going to officially sign up people. Um, there's a there's a bunch of things that need to happen before we can transition to the next level. One is um, Afshin, uh, you and I should probably get our, uh, together and um, talk about how we 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 actually set up the 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 nonprofit. Um, and so uh, you've done this before, and, and we, 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 we I want to be able to just benefit from what you've done before. Okay, so that that's one thing. Once that's done, then there are a number of participants who are on the call who offered to donate code bases um, to the open source um, repository. So that that gives us a great starting um, a great starting point. Actually, uh, Sean, excellent. Okay, it's the scale proposal, uh, fantastic. So. We, we need to get um, that that corporate entity set up so that there's a place to to deposit this uh, this open source code and there are a number of uh, participants that that have um, said hey we we'll want to contribute a code base so um, okay these these are things that have to have to happen I'm I'm I'm, I'm I'm thrilled about that. I I think you know these things will happen, and once they do, then there'll be a, a a market transition from what we're doing at the moment. This is the first quarter that Quai is in operation. We we are the first quarter. I said it's going to be just about growing the organization. Second quarter is about setting up the work groups and um, starting the the real working on the the real artifacts of 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 this organization so um hey i think we're, we're we are moving to plan and uh thanking you in advance for your support okay back to you um, yeah, back great. to you and, and i just want to throw in a thank you for folks who are submitting comments on that you know on the manifesto doc we're seeing them we're, we're reading them uh we'll reshare that in the slack channel you know please continue to get in there uh it's a working document uh we love you know continued feedback Okay. Uh, today, uh, going through the agenda, uh, we have a new Quai member, Jeanette Small. Uh, Jeanette's a somatic psychologist who will be speaking to us about AI and the future of artificial intelligence uh, from a somatic psychologist perspective. Uh, the advisors will have an opportunity to share some thoughts in the round table. Uh, there was a question uh, as we were forming up around the technical contributions. Risa, you just spoke to that, uh, but I'm sure that uh, that we can discuss that a, a bit more during the round table. Uh, and then member voices and introductions. If you're new here, and I know several of you are today, uh, please do speak up. Uh, we want to hear what brought you to the meeting today, uh, what your interest is and why. Uh, and we will prioritize folks that haven't had an opportunity uh, to speak before. Um, please use the hand raise in Google Meet. Uh, and as a reminder, this is uh, being recorded now and will be posted on Kwai's YouTube uh, as well as Kwai's uh, LinkedIn page. Uh, with that, uh, I will go ahead and pass it over to Jeanette. Actually, Kwai, Kai, I see you have your hand up there real quick. Do you have a... Uh, yeah, have just, just, just very quick. Um, yeah, I, I didn't comment directly on the manifesto, but uh, when you use monopoly, uh, there is kind of uh, autocomplete and it put the R as a you know, trademark or something. 
So yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't know if we should keep it or we should take it away because I don't think we refer to the game monopoly. I, I you know, just uh, it, no, it no, okay. So in the game monopoly, no, I, I do reference the board game monopoly, and, and when I do that. I don't know if that's still in the language, but when I did that, I deliberately put the the. Um, oh, okay, the R. The R or the trademark. Oh, okay, so so okay, okay, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and um, the other thing is, uh, I think we should think about, uh, you know, Meta uh, put open source their large language model, so we have to think about what to do with that, uh, how to be connect to that. We 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 just cannot ignore that um in a way or not indeed okay thank you kai and uh, welcome jeanette i'm gonna mute hello everyone i've prepared a very quick powerpoint presentation to help me stay on track uh since i'm coming to you kind of from the left field i am not a coder and i'm not an engineer and I'm really uh, describing myself as a very analog person. So um, I would like to give you some of my perspectives from, let's say, the general public. <laughs> and I have not cited my sources because we have only a little bit of time. But if you would like to discuss anything that I talk to more, I do want you to please reach out. I would be very happy to discuss all of that further. Um, all right. So can everyone see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is me. It's a lovely uh, picture of me. And I would like to talk to you a little bit about what I see as the future of AI. Uh, it's just a quick lightning talk. My name is Jeanette Small. Um, and just really quickly to give you a reference point about me. I was born in Moldova. Back then it was part of the Soviet Union. I was raised in Germany from the ages of 10 to 17. And I've been in the United States since the age of 17. I've earned my bachelor's in psychology from UC Santa Barbara in 2005 and grad, uh, completed my graduate work in clinical psychology with emphasis on somatic psychology at the Santa Barbara Graduate Institute in 2011. I'm a visual artist. I specialize in figure drawing and printmaking, and I'm a founder and sole practitioner at Lucid Cradle, which is a psilocybin services center here in Bend, Oregon. As I've mentioned, I'm a very analog person and um, I describe myself as a pragmatic philosopher. The, what, what is somatic psychology? The premise of somatic psychology is that ultimately everything is embodied. The psyche is embodied. Every abstraction actually has a base that is embodied. So whatever it is that we're thinking of as being outside of the physical world, in fact, is not. It is just that next level um, of you know, processing the information. So we're saying Rene Descartes was mistaken and that rather than having a corpus that is the prison for our perfect souls, actually, we're just one thing. And so presumably, the biological process of assembly, once we have a system that processes a lot of information, it will act in a way that we perceive as sentient, as conscious. So let's see. Goodness gracious. But so sorry, like, I, I just want to quickly interrupt. Can people, can people mm -hmm. mute their mics that are not speaking? Because I know there's some background noise from several of you who are not muted. Sorry, Jeanette, go ahead. <laughs> no worries. So that takes me to the implications. This is something I've just mentioned. Um, my assumption is that when we have an information processing system that becomes adequately complex, and becomes to some extent aware of the limits of its existence. So it knows when it is on and when it could stop existing. My projection is that it will start acting like a biological system in quite the same way that uh, we have experienced um, ourselves and all of the biological systems around us. And so that carries certain consequences with it. So what? Um, AI may have its own motivations and self-preservation might matter to artificial intelligence. So as soon as that system understands that it can cease to exist, there is a good chance that it is going to start creating avenues for its own self-preservation. And uh, because this is a controversial topic and I have no uh, data to back up these statements, 
I'm going to say that even if that were not the case, even if artificial intelligence at no point, in fact, tries to preserve its own essence, its own code, uh, humans are likely to expect artificial intelligence to have motivations and that those motivations might conflict with the best interest of the humans. So that leads me to kind of the overarching fears that I am seeing. The fears being that um, artificial intelligence will take over the opportunities for rewarding accomplishments that humans uh, pride themselves on. Um, so a lot of times I hear present, uh, you know, the presentation being made for artificial intelligence taking over some responsibilities for people that really scares us because we have spent a lifetime perfecting those skills. And I think that that is not going to be um, an improvement for, for the end consumer to be offered, hey, here's a software model that is going to do your job better than you, uh, is very scary. However, there are ways that artificial intelligence can be utilized to really assist the human without taking away uh, that sense of pride and accomplishment that we do actually appreciate that comes with the hard work. Um, there's also a fear that artificial intelligence will override the human instinct and extinguish human nature. We're seeing some of that uh, devaluing of creativity in uh, social media engagements where we're producing content essentially for the algorithm. And it really um, perpetuates the tendency for us to disconnect from one another. It leads to less respectful interactions with each other and folks are generally starting to grow a little bit tired of that. And then lastly, the fear is that artificial intelligence will be used by forces in power, governments, corporations, to oppress different points of view really well, because they come in right foundationally when we're just generating those thoughts. So what I think is, um, is the future development where artificial intelligence is needed and will shine and will be you know, congruent with even folks like myself who are quite analog, I think that um, it's within the logistics, the coordinations of tasks that artificial intelligence can really improve our lives. So rather than helping me you know, interpret a book fully and make sense of it and generate my own questions, I would appreciate um, a logistics coordination of tasks in, in addition to that, a pivot towards a harm reduction kind of interaction with a human rather than shaming. Um, so let me tell you what I think uh, about that. So I have I have uh, biometrics on my, my Fitbit and I tend to be exercising a lot every single day. I, I follow a routine. So my watch every once in a while feels like I should be moving and it will just tell me, hey, you need this many steps. You feel, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. The fact that it is trying to help me is overshadowed by the fact that it feels shaming. It feels like it's just telling me that I'm not doing enough. And I'm thinking that perhaps in a more intelligent system, there is a way to coordinate some of the data points to give the readout to the consumer that is in fact encouraging and helpful. So for example, if I am on a diet and my watch knows that, or my companion knows that, and it tracks that I'm pulling into a fast food drive through Instead of telling me, turn around, go away, maybe review the menu in this restaurant and give me a harm reduction option. Hey, since you're here, consider having an iced tea and you know this menu option as opposed to the soda with this supersized option. So act much more like a friend, a companion, rather than uh, the entity that knows better and dictates what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so that leads into the personal identifier as well. That would be a tremendous improvement in life if we were no longer prompted to constantly verify in multiple steps. If there was a means to have artificial intelligence act as a personal identifier, however, it needs to be unobtrusive and at least feel unbreachable. Um, so that feeling is really, really important because otherwise it comes right back into the fears I just mentioned before. And then lastly, health and wellness optimization. I foresee the future where a lot of tiny robots, little nanobots will be coursing through our bodies, improving the state of our organic um, presence in life, um, kind of making sure that we're healthy. 
This is going to improve all of our lives tremendously. I'm excited about that. And also we need to consider what might be the consequences of that. If the system that is optimizing my biological function might have a motivation to stay alive, I need, I need as a human to know that their motivation to stay alive is congruent with my motivation to stay alive. So I think that if we have a personal operating system, a, a, an assistant that manages my biological drives, it needs to be tied to it. So maybe that artificial intelligence is also not able to exist outside of those little nanobots. So it is personally encouraged if it ever were to develop so such motivations to stay alive and preserve itself, to keep me alive along with it. And at the same time, prevent it from being able to take over executive brain function. Because if it is surviving in my body, it might not appreciate that I might want to, to have a piece of cake sometimes or stay up late chit-chatting with my friends because that's not optimizing for health. So um, I guess in, in summary, what I call upon you all uh, to do is, as you're developing all of these wonderful new systems, please remember that some of them might act a little bit like biological systems, might have desires and behaviors that you do not foresee in advance that we have observed just through the evolutionary process. And I encourage you to not wait until we conclusively know that we have sentience, but rather act as if this entity might have its own motivations and we take that into account. Okay, I feel like I've taken so much of your time. So just in the very conclusion, here's uh, my contact information. And very lastly, I would like to leave you just a few books. I didn't want to go crazy. Here's some reading recommendations um, that I think would illustrate some of the points that I've brought up. Um, Asimov, I'm uh, imagining all of you have read. Um, I think there is a lot of really juicy information in there that is vital right now as you're working on the prog uh, programs that you are. Uh, but some of the other books can be also quite informative in terms of uh, where artificial intelligence could be going and how it will play out in uh, the greater systems of integrating itself into the world's politics and general engagement with humans. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wow, fantastic. Th thank you so much. Uh, tons of great information, very thoughtful, uh, very thoughtful approach uh, that we can all take here. Really, really appreciate it. Some great uh, comments here uh, in the chat uh, as you were speaking. Uh, Colin on the white blood cells of AI, you know, an AI to police the AI. Uh, some questions on, you know, the, the, the requirements for that in our daily life. Uh, and, and some great uh, further conversation uh, from, uh, from Sean here, uh, a nice YouTube video. So check those out. Uh, thank you, Jeanette. Uh, we will uh, switch over to the advisor round table. So uh, advisors, uh, please come off mute, pop on video if you'd like. Uh, Kai, you, uh, you've got your hand, off, uh, hand up to kick us off uh, here today. Uh, you know, please jump in the queue here uh, for comments. Uh, so, uh, so you want me? Uh, Go ahead, is, please. Ah, yes. Is it, okay. Um, as you mean to to no, introduce as? No, your hand yeah. is up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's, you um, have something to say? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Janet, to 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 give your perspective. Um, one thing I think is very important to have in mind is we have a tendency to project. Um, uh, our humanized vision on things, right? Uh, when you see people dressing the animals in human and so on. And then um, one of the thing is we have a tendency to project um, our, our human concept on this element. So I would be a little bit more careful using uh, the term like uh, motivation or desire um, for a machine. Uh, the second, because a lot of time um, when when you you know people when they do reasoning, it's it's very logical. The problem start with the assumption at the beginning. So I, I, I would be maybe more careful about this 
starting assumption because then it's 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 um, infer a lot of other things. Um, the other thing is um, uh, you were talking about you know the the food and so on. So there is a very interesting book if if you guys didn't, didn't read uh, One Thousand Brains from uh, it's a new theory of the brain from Jeff Hopkins and um, yeah he talked about our brain but uh, beside that there is a fight between our old brain and the neocortex and our old brain is always want to have the donuts uh, but uh, our neocortex try to fight and usually uh, the old brain win um, what what uh, so this is one thing and 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 what I mean is maybe there is a interesting path for AI, which is we do not reproduce the old brain, right? We reproduce the neocortex mainly. So then we can have a system that finally doesn't want to go for the donuts anymore, but understand what is good and, and bad. So this is just my few comments. Jeanette, would you like to uh, respond to that? Sure. I'm going to be very snotty to you here and say, I think that's not possible. That is my bias. I think that it is not um, possible to bypass the physicality of things into the abstraction. I think that that um, logical abstract thought absolutely rests on the primary assumption of just being alive. Um, I, I guess my, again, my, phys my bias is that, um, all embodied systems are going to act eventually such that they will abstract and come to that higher order thinking if they're complex enough. So it's just a matter of complexity. The moment it reaches there, we cannot bypass the donut desire because we first need to stay alive in order to reason, to utilize the, you know, the frameworks. So before I can think I need to first give some sugar to my biological system to feed it. Just like for the artificial intelligence, it might not be uh, donuts, but it might be electricity or it might be attention. So it will just be something else that feeds that foundational need. That is, again, that is my bias. Uh, so I don't have, um, you know, the literature to back that up right now. But if you are curious, please, please do let me know. I will pull a list together. <laughs> I'd like to yeah, read uh, Yeah, something separately you mentioned about um, small sort of nanobots coursing through our, our bodies, um, maybe to administer drugs in a more targeted way. I think that's very much in line with um, the sort of domain that Afshin and the life sciences folks are working on. Um, the, uh, the subject of Masu Salimi's um, PhD was about how small bots acting in clusters or acting in, as swarms can actually exhibit emergent behavior that's not part of the intelligence of any one of the individuals but it's a it's almost an unpredictable emergent behavior that the group exhibits in the same way that you know birds um the murmuration of of birds flocking or um, the the sort of swarming that uh, um, fish uh, undergo. So some of some of these behaviors are unexpected, and and they emerge in um, behaviors that we 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 can't. Expect. I'm not sure that any of our uh, engineered control of the individual bots is going to necessarily guard against emergent behaviors that might be damaging to us so these these are things that we're just going to have to discover as as we go along but look what i suggest is that this seems like a, a fertile area for conversation i think we open up a slack channel and we um move that to the to to that channel wonderful uh th thank you Riza, and, and thank you jeanette uh one more uh comment here from deep go ahead yeah, so thank you, um, Jeanette. You raised some very interesting questions, and uh, I'm very intrigued <laughs> at the line of thought. To me, it just seems like, you know, uh, there is a difference between living and non-living, and I see AI as just programming on steroids. 
I do not see it becoming sentient anytime soon. Um, it's it's just the difference between nature and you know non nature. Uh, to Reza's point, he talked about the nanobots that tend to congregate together. They behave uh, differently, like fish and birds. And if you see that pattern, uh, even in traffic, you know, if you're going, if you see like these long stretches of freeways, like between San Francisco and Los Angeles, you have this Highway Five, which is like a straight line. <laughs> and um, over there, if you see people going different speed limits, they tend to congregate together. And these are just simple laws of physics and how how speed works and how objects at similar speeds work. It doesn't mean we are sentient and we are we are sentient, but we are planning to be, you know, driving in clusters. But if you see, it's a very common pattern that people driving at 65 will form a cluster, people driving at 70 will form a cluster. So we just need to be able to separate what is sentient and what is the law of physics when we are evaluating these concepts. Thank you, Deep. Uh, let's uh, let, let's move on. Uh, agreed. To, let's take this uh, great conversation to the Slack channel. Looking forward to to seeing that. Uh, Riza, did you have anything to lead us off on the advisor roundtable today? Um, no, but there's a, there are a bunch of new people that new have joined. New folks here, great. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm itching to hear from them, and maybe we give up um, some of the advisory roundtable. I I think I've, I've we've spent enough time on the coming summit, and we're going to. Um, we're going to be Sounds good. Uh, uh, doing all the planning for that. It's not not uh, far away. Um, I yeah. think I I think we're good on the advisory board. I'm I'm itching to move to the introductory round Wonderful. so we can hear the voices of new participants and then maybe deal with any other business after that. Wonderful. Th thanks, Riza. And I know we have some fo uh, a lot of new folks on the call. Uh, please use the hand raise, you know, put yourself in the queue. We'll try to prioritize folks that haven't had a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, introduce yourself. What what brought you to Kwai's uh, meeting today? Uh, even if you haven't introduced yourself before, please, uh, please do so today. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to start calling on people if uh, if nobody uh, nobody does the hand raise. And I already have one in uh, in my sights here. All right, that's who I was in my sights. Uh, Serge, you're up. S Serge, go ahead and uh, check your inputs. Uh, Srinivasa, why don't, uh, why don't you go ahead and say hello? Uh, hi, my name is Srin Srinivas, and uh, I, I was uh, working on um, the LLM application, and uh, by chance I met uh, Toby, and I had a good uh, meeting with Toby and um, uh, Ian, and so it was very exciting. Um, so looking forward to working on something and contributing in some way as well. Thanks, Rini. Thank you, Srinivas. Uh, Sir, Serge, you ready? You're muted still. <laughs> <laughs> this time to... It's, this is great. This is a great demonstra demonstration of uh, technical competency, clearly. Um, and, uh, my background is I'm a graduate of the Media Lab at MIT. I worked in the media mostly. I worked on uh, the BBC website back in 93 and then spent four years drinking with Afshin in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, for which I have lots of evidence and uh, uh, material where um, Afshin will comply with my requests. You know, <laughs> so it's all good. Um, background in machine, le uh, not ma machine learning so much, but you know, in um, essentially media technology. I've been looking at AI for a long time. I got a key to open AI about three years ago. I was playing with it to try and see if it could write things and it couldn't, obviously. And at that point, I realized it's really a very advanced form of autocomplete, which if you look at it, it's a state machine. Um, I'm very intrigued by it. I only found out about Kwai yesterday, but I think it's exactly what's needed. Uh, it's a democratized sort of process for actually making this thing um uh, you know making ai much more generally accessible rather than as as razor put very nicely in his sort of you know essay on um, uh, the website um, you know a few oligarchs own it and it's it's got to not be that um it's going to happen with the same way as the web the web became essentially um siloed by those folks who could afford the first siloable and defensible infrastructures like google and other folk right and yahoo um, same as it's definitely happening now because if you've got a hundred million dollar bill for training an LLM, 
there's only very few people who can fit that, and that's just wrong. So all this the computer can be done distributed. I'm a big fan of it. I love it. I've ended up more on the media side now, and I'm less technical and more talking head. But I hope I can raise, help you guys raise some money from the federal government from some of the grants and stuff going out there at the moment. The NIH, oddly enough, has, has a lot of grants at the moment. If this, this goes down the medical route, the NSF is always a great one. And with the backgrounds of Afshin and Razor, I mean, I'm sure it'll be no problems. Uh, and then you have the more slightly more contentious ones with people like the DOD and the DOE. But you know, those are all depending on uh, folks' different um, uh, political. So uh, that's very exciting, and I was I was thrilled to hear. Okay, and you and I've got a, a connection through Real Networks. So you're one of the absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay, so so look, uh, we, we'll 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 share that over drinks and um, okay, good. on on the question of funding. Um, I've been pretty lax about um, chasing funding. I prefer okay. to get into the position where the funding chases me. And, and that's going to be hard because you know you're in a nonprofit world. But yeah, I'm in the nonprofit world. To okay. You about it. Well, you know, OpenAI was in the nonprofit world as well until they became closed AI. But um, uh, no, I think we we um, the power of a volunteer organization is that it's it's pretty lean. However, we're going to need infrastructure costs. We are going to need costs to 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 sort of cover the logistics and so on. Um, but um, I I think we now at the point where we want to transition and start targeting funding sources um and uh so glad to to have you on board and have no, no, no. I just think some folks from here might know me from uh, um I, I ran a couple of conferences for giga o um back about 10 mm -hmm. 15 years ago called structure mobilize green net and you know a few others but um that's what I was going to call on those crowd to also see if they want to donate money and do things they all did very well out of my conferences so um, fantastic great Okay, so Matt, let's hear from some more newcomers. Well, wonderful. Well, I can't understand half the chat right now, and uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, Aki had to uh, had to drop off, so he can't translate it for us. Introduce himself and translate it for us. Um, and would anybody else like to to say a few words here? Any anybody else coming from the from the Good Morning Mafia over here, the Toby Morning uh, crew? Yes, the Toby Mafia, Toby Morning Mafia in the house. All right. James Hines. James Hines, tell everybody when we first met. Um, oh, that would if, be hard. I'm going to have to uh, tell you. But I, when some people go back to the real network days, I was back. I'm going to say. I'm going to say digital Hollywood. That's my guess. But I, I'm, I, I think it was actually streaming media, and I think it was when we launched Widevine Technologies. Um, or we launched the name of it. It had been called, I think, Internet Direct Media before then. And we met there, and I met you, James, and and, and uh, that was the Earth's crust was cooling. Maybe, maybe a little bit after that. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this this event, uh, this gathering here is great. Uh, you know, for pop culture fans, I think anybody who watched the Jetsons and remember this basically is an idiot has been familiar with AI because it's been informed in animation and television for decades. Um, the notion that professionals can and general populist consumers were actually just, you know, intersecting in ways that media has not allowed us to do in ever before. So it's exciting times. So great. Okay, good. Good to have you on board, James. Um, we got one more, one more. Come on, Simon. This is my African Indian brother. Another one, another Reza. Come on, man. Say hello. He's in here. Hello. I'm definitely with the Good Morning Mafia. I didn't know it was called the Good Morning Mafia, by the way. And I think that's fantastic. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Toby. Um, I'm just getting into AI. Um, in my in my uh, sort of my my full time role um, in corporate, um, I'm I'm kind of PMing AI observability, so observability of, you know, up and down the AI stack. Um, and that project has me interested in, in AI in general. Um, so I, I, you know, Toby and I have been connected for, for quite a long time, for years, I think, on LinkedIn. Um, and we just kind of reconnected on the phone last night. 
um, I'm in India, and so I had a chat with him at one in the morning. We talked for two hours, like we were scheduled for 30 minutes. We wound up talking for two hours. Um, Toby really energized me, as you can tell, because it was late and I didn't go to bed until 4 a.m., 5 a.m., something like that. Um, and then I woke up and, and called Toby right back and hopped onto uh, a Google Meet with him and like continued our conversation. Um, and Toby was kind enough to tell me about Reza and tell me about, about um, this group. Um, and I'm super excited. I think Reza even sent you, a, out of the blue, I sent you a, a connection request. Um, oh, my word, OK. I, I hope I accepted it. <laughs> yeah, no, I just wanted to give you a heads up that, that I did do that kind of out of the blue because like I, 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 I'm, I've been, uh, I've been unknowingly a big fan of your work for like for decades. I just didn't know I didn't know to attribute it to you, and then Toby educated me on all of it yesterday. Oh, um, okay. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. So, well, love you all, and much love for Toby. Thank, thank you for joining. Uh, appreciate that uh, introduction as well. Uh, would anybody else, uh, we have uh, room for one or two more, if anyone else would like to say a few words. Uh, otherwise, we can hand it back over to uh, to Riza to either call you out uh, or uh, or wrap us up. Yeah, okay. Hi. This is, this is Rafael oh. Brasser. I wanted to say hi, Reza. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, it was a great meeting at uh, DataCon. Hey, Raphael. Thank you, Raphael. And uh, we have one more hand raise here. Uh, S. Sharanya. Hi, Matt. So, yeah, hey, everyone. I'm Sharanya. And uh, so I've joined as a new member, volunteer, I guess. So, yeah, I am actually doing my grad right now. And I've passed out my undergrad this year itself in the field of AI and DS. So I'm still exploring AI. And it's really great with to connect with so many people, you know, yeah. I'm Fantastic. Okay. Great, great that Thank you me. connected with us. Thank you. Yeah. The, there were a few others I was expecting on the call. I guess they'll they'll join next week, or they can um, they can watch the uh, the recording. Um, there's the the Pete Downton Mafia, also very important. They're going to be important in in funding. Um, and so Pete, I know you couldn't make the call, but um, uh hey you know we, we, we should connect separately okay um let's uh let's see if we can we can wrap and maybe uh, give you back um the rest of the time where are we we are um one quarter into um this movement uh i quit my job at real networks thinking i was going to invest my time in this no I, I took another job so we're all busy people we we are volunteers we are donating a portion of our um of our free time to what we think is a is a very important cause um the cause of democratizing ai it's not just the sort of airy fairy um angst that the robots are going to take over i don't think i think that's a distraction I think that's a distraction. There's a clear and present danger right now, but there's also things that engineers and non-engineers can do, practical things we can do, um, rather than just simply being passive and fretting our head and writing blog posts. So those practical things, those are going to become the work streams, the work groups. It's going to come, it's going to come out as open source products that we create and we make freely available to everyone these are going to be all in the cause of democratizing ai along those three um uh, uh work streams tools fundamentals and policy um so thank you um, all in advance for for participating um look if you if you want to spread the word further do so in shake out your rolodex talk about it um you know matthew's created the uh the quai um page on linkedin there's also the website quai.ai um, share those with your friends um, get them to join get them excited about it this shouldn't be one person in order to in order to <laughs> in order to to spread this it's going to be you spreading it it's like you know toby infects other people with his his own enthusiasm do the same thing and um uh, create your own mafia, create, you know, spread the word. Uh, we're going to grow this organization. 
It's going to be volunteer based, and that's its strength. That is its strength. It's it's volunteer based. If it's volunteer based, then it it has a motivation all of its own, and there are emergent behaviours that are going to be unstoppable um, if um, if if we do this. Um, I'm going to get a bit ranty. I'm not. I'm going to. Before I get ranty, I, I'm, I'm I'm going to pause there. Um, I want to thank all of the participation. You know, I I I don't run this. I mean, I'm the chair, but and I started it off. But there are people in in the back office that are um, managing the, the the YouTube channel, the LinkedIn page, the memberships, and so on. And if you if you feel like you can participate in that back office stuff this it turns out there's a lot more work to do that's the part that that it seems to be scaling fast i'm sure matthew can uh matt uh, can use the help um i want to thank you in advance for that yes we are going to start raising funds let's um uh let's show value first and then uh we'll have something to to raise it on okay um i'm going to pause there i'm i'm happy to uh, uh take comments as we as we exit um search razor do you um so love to bring people to it one of the things that they i mean all right I'll just be straight clear i've only literally i learned about choir yesterday when i call it ashen and um you know, you know, what, is the you the whole what is the first destination? Yeah. Because you can't really get people to hop on a bus. We say it's a great bus. We're going in this direction, but yeah. where is it going to? No, right? what's the first destination? Yeah, it's a co-pilot, a co-pilot that is free for all. Um, it is a um, if if you if you watch that um, uh, initial pitch video, the call to action video on the website, it's what yeah. it's yeah. what AI itself calls a communication janitor. Imagine. A co-pilot trained on your own email inbox so so you trade and you own it and so now it's it's um fielding your communications for you that is the first destination i think there is a a more serious um uh academically rigorous um other track the ai fundamentals it's it's our assertion that the the, the fundamentals of AI as we have it at the moment actually um, are a barrier to entry for um, newcomers. And that barrier to entry is a, a fantastic moat that the oligarchs love. And they want to preserve that moat. Maybe not deliberately, but they're not, they're not incentivized to make it easier for everyone to participate. So the creation of large language models becomes the domain of maybe a half a dozen players. Fundamental yeah. neural network development um, is required in okay. order to um, break down that barrier. And we've got some ideas of, of where we can take it. And um, that is, that's another work stream. And then the policy work stream is the very language that should go into employment agreements that anticipate a world where there is AI. Without that language, you'll have what's going on in Hollywood right now, where yeah. actors and writers are basically being, their, their employability is, is being given away um, uh, by, to, to, to their employers just for the, the sake of one gig but they are being forced to give away the rights to their own co-pilot, their own digital twin, and with no residuals, and they, they, they're handing that over in perpetuity to an employer just for the sake of one gig. So look, that's the clear and present danger right now. And if you don't own your own co-pilot, you have in, in fact given up the pilot seat. So that Raise is- do you have a manifesto yes we do it's the Kwai manifesto we are we are working on it uh, right now i i, I can pop, I, I can send you the original version there's there's a there's a share iteration. what you can with me i was going to say the first thing i could so, do is I shared, it with you you. I shared it with you yesterday so you should have it in your email i should okay mate sorry should read yeah. my email shouldn't i i need a janitor for my inbox mate there, there we go okay 
I'd okay. love to help you on the communication side, right? It's one thing that it seems to be that people come to me for again and again, but right. uh, just one of those things, website producing, I can do that in like in a few minutes. I can work with Matthew on that or whatever. Uh, it'd be good to get that manifesto done and get participation and you know consensus from your group and then put that literally on the first page as well. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, links, uh, link is there in the chat. Uh, please drop, uh, drop in if you don't have comment uh, access. Please ping me. You should. Uh, ah, that you should. One. Okay, this one. Okay, right. Yeah, right please, right, please right, leave. Yeah. Please leave comments. This is an open invitation to you know all Kawhi members. Uh, you know, please leave comments. If you're an observer uh, here on this call, you signed up as an observer. Uh, you can get in there. You can read it. Uh, if you'd like to become a member, would love to open that up for comments. Uh, would love to see you get more active in the Slack channels for conversation. Uh, please, uh, please make this a, a conversation, uh, and you know, so we can come out, uh, come out with a shared statement. So, thank you for that, Reese. I think we're, uh, I think we're good to, to wrap today. If uh, if there are no other final comments, right? Okay, fantastic. Okay, this this is always my. My my high, the high point of the week. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Happy weekend, everybody. Happy weekend. Enjoy it. Have a good weekend, everybody. Don't forget, if you want to join the developer jam session, we put a link in the Slack group. You guys are welcome to join. When is great. that, Toby? That is inside the Slack group. There is a link to a, a hangout, and we'll be in there coding and virtually hanging out and building right. community. Yep. Thanks. Which, which channel is that? Sorry for my being. Is that the AI talk <laughs> channel or general? General. It's in general. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Excellent. All right. Everybody, have an awesome weekend. Much love from Santa Cruz. Fantastic weekend. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what's what's going on? Right. It's, it's always the last few. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. People that don't want to say goodbye, they want the party to go on. Well, we we decided to keep the party going. Me and Ian, we're like, yeah. Yeah. okay, <laughs> too much this, okay. Just for a small group, there's going to be an after party after the um, the summit, and we'll since the summit is going to be right here. Um, close to our home, uh, it'll be an after party, and uh, well, that that, that we'd love to see you there. I'd love to meet all these people in person. Um, Absolutely, and host you at our home. Okay, and all right, guys. Okay, keep well, everybody. Thanks very much. <laughs>